Okay. Are we live? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Uh, That's hello. us. Hello. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Mateusz and I'm the community manager for Ansha Studios and I'm here with Marcin. Yes, I am Marcin Przybyłek. I know that my surname is very difficult to, uh, to hear and to pronounce, uh, but it is a Polish surname. I'm a writer, consultant and a part of a team designer uh, cooperating with Anshar uh, on Game the Game. Uh, for those who want to see the gameplay, you will have to wait some time because uh, we want to. We have agenda. We, we have to do some things before we we we, we yes, play we the the gameplay video. That's true. Uh, so let's start with the the video which started everything. Okay. Uh, so let's start with the reveal video. Let's let's do some review. I'm a game dad. I solve crimes in virtual worlds. Like a murder over a game clan dispute. Or child slavery in a free to play game. A lot has changed in this world, but not the human nature. Greed leads to crime. Crime leads to conspiracy. And conspiracies are what the corporations thrive on. They think they can control me, calculate my choices. They can't. The choice is mine. I watched it many times and I still like it. Yeah, Ma Martin can quote every sentence from, from this yeah, trailer. Yeah. He, he just did it on the <laughs> game day. I saw crimes in virtual worlds. So. Yeah, so th this, is, this is where it all started, yeah? Th yeah. This is where, where, where we showed people the uh, reveal trailer. Well, it started for you, but it didn't start for us. We were working on this game for a very long time before this reveal, so... Yeah, so, so I've heard, but yes. uh, <laughs> let's, let's show people what they want to see, so, yeah. so the gameplay. Yeah. Uh, a little disclaimer, uh, this is the pre-alpha footage, uh, yeah. it's still a work in progress, uh, so uh, it may be buggy, it may, something may ha might, might happen. It's a pre-rendered video, so we're not playing it right now. Uh, we just want to show you the demo, the demo from the PAX and uh, Gamescom, uh, so here it is, yes. let's, let's talk about the gameplay. Uh, right. We have some time yes. before, before this, this main menu right. uh, will go live uh, for the for the gameplay. Right. Uh, what so did, what did you feel when, when you first saw the the fruits of work of, from from Ansha Studios? Well, I don't know if you know, but uh, a writer is a person who imagines a lot. So I imagined that moment for so many times and I cried and I was moved and so on. So eventually uh, when I s actually saw that, I wasn't that moved uh, because I visualized all of this uh, before. But of course, it's, um, I have to repeat myself. I have to talk to myself. Martin, it really happens because um, making a game based on your books when you are a writer is a really big deal and uh, well the writers don't admit it uh, but they really dream of it and uh, the fact that it happened to me is a great miracle in my life uh, uh, this and may maybe the next one so it's really something uh, so here's the loading screen, but the, the UI, the, the graphics, it, it can all change. Yes, it will. Ch I'm, sh I'm sure it will change. So this is the low city. Yes. Okay, can you tell us something about low city? Well, low city is the lowest part of Warsaw City. Well, every police in Game Deckverse has low city. Uh, it is not the lowest part um, uh, from the geographical point of view, because below low city there is under city, but uh, you don't want to live there. Only the savages live there, the people who, who don't want to live in civilized world. But uh, this part um, of Warsaw City is dark, uh, as you can see, 
and um, it and it rains. Uh, the fact that it rains doesn't mean that it rains also above. Most probably, it's a weather anomaly, and um, above there is sunshine. But uh, nobody in Low City can see that there is sunshine beca because the um, net of air pavements is so dense above that no sun rays reach low city. And our first task is to get into the Yetz bar yeah. uh, because we, we have heard that something bad is happening in the harvest time. Yeah. Uh, so here you can use an aspect. Yeah. Uh, an aspect uh, is uh, a skill, uh, a, a certain quality you right. can use to, to, you, to uh, pick one from, uh, pin one, w pick one dialogue from, yeah. from the list. Mm -hmm. uh, here we have an aspect of uh, someone who is from low city yes. and people uh, people like other people from, from low city of course. because yeah of course they do. why not <laughs> uh, so here it is uh, we are in the Yetis bar yes it is called Yetis coming uh, well the typical uh, thing about such premises is that uh, they are nightclubs and they are open 24 7 because it is always dark there so it is a very convenient place low city is a very convenient place for for nightclubs and uh, well you just like the atmosphere of, of this place although it's very low and um, not very rich people live there nevertheless the artist team uh, did their best to make this place an interesting one. We have something interesting here. Yeah. It's a barrier, yeah? yeah. We, we can't go upstairs, <laughs> but, but we have to go upstairs. Yes. So we have to deduce what to do next, uh, yes. where to go, uh, whom to talk with, yes. etc. Uh, so we're going to skip the bartender right now, <laughs> but uh, we're going to, to, to talk with Detroit. Yeah. Uh, Detroit is uh, named Rick. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when, when you when you when you want to go somewhere, uh, he will show you the way. Yes. He will say, "This is the way," and <laughs> you have to go that way. <laughs> well, uh, if, uh, Rick is a little bit broken. Uh, it was a military droid, um, and uh, well, it's malfunctioning. So it's a funny guy. Now we are talking to. To yet. Yeah, old Not yet is yet. a very interesting uh, persona in, in, in this game, a right. uh, very interesting character. And here we have an aspect that we, we are <coughs> an uh, esports celebrity. Yes. Uh, so we use this, and as far uh, as I know, uh, esports celebrities uh, can use the couches for free. Yes, yes. Well, well it's a natural thing that uh, the couches are separated from the lower part of the bar because when you enter the sensory worlds, that is virtual worlds, you leave all your clothes behind uh, in, the, in the closet. So yeah, you have to wear a special suit. Yes, so uh, it's a natural thing that this area should be closed and you should pay for that. But if you are a pro gamer, then of course you can get there. We have two couches uh, currently not available. Yes. One is offline, yes. uh, and the last one is the one we can we can take to to go to the harvest time. Right. Well, uh, uh, yet is coming is not the best nightclub, so some couches are just not properly functioning. So harvest time. Yeah. It's one of the virtual worlds. Yes. Uh, and uh, it's <coughs> stylized uh, as a free-to-play game. Yes. Like uh, Farmville, for, right. uh, for example, Harvest Moon, yeah. etc. Yeah. Uh, Harvest Moon is a farm game, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so this is the deduction screen. Right. Uh, it, it will not look in the game like... Uh, like yeah, the, the UI work is progress. still work in progress, yes. so it will look differently. Uh, but we want to show you how many branches we have and how many decisions you can make yeah. uh, and how many clues you have to, to find out to uh, yes. choose the right path. Yes. Uh, well, um, uh, I remember when we were um, thinking uh, what game to put in a given place uh, in the gameplay and uh, since it was quite dark around, especially in Low City, then we decided that the game should be sunny. Uh, there should be sunshine, there should be um, sort of... Um, happy environment. Ha yes, happy atmosphere. Uh, so here it is, uh, the elements from the free-to-play game, so yes. bars, everything has to have a bar. Yeah. Uh, you will have to wait, you will have to grind if, if you want to collect coins, gold coins. That's right. Uh, so it's, <coughs> it's not mocking free-to-play games, but we, we tend to uh, change the game 
change, change the, the virtual world. Mm -hmm. uh, so it will look just like the games we can play even today. Yes. Well, I think um, that um, it is important that, well, in game developers, uh, corporations rule the world and also corporations uh, which develop games. So uh, at the end of um, uh, at the end of day, money rules the world. So in games, it shouldn't be uh, the opposite. Here we have a help bot. So yeah. another one. Uh, here, 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 his name is Andy. Uh, Andy Joe. Andy Joe, yes. and he ends every sentence with "Iha." Iha. Yeah, <laughs> because why not? And, because why not? And he says that he will not answer your question if you do not use yiha. Yeah. But it's also, of course, a lie. You cannot. You 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 don't have to um, use the that yiha. You can provoke him, and he will like it. Well, he is a hellbot. He cannot be rude. Yeah. Uh, and uh, our task in harvest time is to find Stan. Yeah. And if you don't know where to go, you can ask hellbot, and yes. uh, as a hellbot, he will help you. Yeah. Uh, so, if, if you really don't know where to go, uh, there are some indicators which can lead you to, to stand. Yes, it, that is an easy path because there are a lot of other paths that players can choose and uh, look for stun um, in other places, uh, not so lazy. And uh, there are some interesting directions there. So, it's very important to listen to every dialogue, yes. uh, even, even if there is no icon above the character. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you can hear a dialogue which will open a new path on, yes. on the deduction screen. Yes, of course, we uh, try to make a game uh, which um, I don't want to use the word forces, but uh, gamers who will think will uh, find this game uh, more fun. You can't rush in this game. Yeah. You, you have to play slowly. You have to. You have to uh, be the character. Yeah. You have to yes. be the game deck. You have to be interested in what's going on in this world. And and it is important not to be afraid of um, solutions of actions that may seem not very uh, orthodox. Just yeah. experiment. Let, let's grab this coin. <laughs> Uh, the coin has no purpose right now, but we want to uh, implement some system to, yes. to use the coin, uh, yes. for example, to get another clue. Yes. But uh, it's still a work in progress. We, we still want to have many options open. It, 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 it was important for us to uh, make um, differences uh, in UI of uh, virtual world. So there we can see this uh, icon counter and we will be able to use them. Yeah, you can see next to the pumpkins, you have an uh, indicator that you, you can do something with the pumpkins. Yes. And here is egg, and egg, as you can see, doesn't like to be bothered from behind. Yeah. He, he has to see you if, if you want to talk with him. Well, but yes, it's a work in progress. Uh, it's, it's just like the real world, yes. yeah? I yes. can see you, I can talk with yes. you. That's right. Uh, okay, uh, let's, let's see what, 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 uh, what well, Ake can Ake, tell us. Ake is not a very pleasant person. Uh, he oversees other players. It's a strange thing because if you play uh, such a beautiful game, then you should have fun. Mm -hmm. And it occurs that somebody is watching other players and they don't want to talk to us when Ake is watching. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I would ask you to leave them after the presentation. And uh, right now we have deduction. Uh, and we talk with one of the of the characters, so yeah. one of the options is open, but we yeah. still cannot deduct uh, what what to do next, what, what which branch we should go. Yes. So let's talk with someone else, right. and let's see if we can do something more yeah. in this in this world. Uh, we have some time, so why not harvest some some <laughs> yes. pumpkins? It's not that easy. The first bar is just si sitting the, the right. uh, planting the seeds, yeah. It's and then it's another one when when the pumpkin uh, rises. Yeah, yes. you have to wait. You know, at the beginning when I heard that there would be s uh, such an interaction, I was laughing because I I thought who would want to do that? And yeah, when it's I kind of grotesque, yeah, to to see this. But but I do that. You know? Oh, someone just collapsed yes. in, in the background. Uh, and it doesn't look good. No. It doesn't look good. It shouldn't be so. We have an aspect of Hackerman. Yeah. Uh, some, some of you uh, might know where we, we, we get this name, but <laughs> uh, Hackerman uh, allows us to uh, try to um, save this guy yeah, yes. and his progress 
because it's still a game. So mm -hmm. if someone gets uh, disconnected, yeah. uh, it might end badly uh, for his health. Yes. And uh, uh, the progress he, he just made. Well, he didn't save the game, so he might lose progress. And when we talk to another gamer, uh, the another player, mm -hmm. we will get to know that it's a disaster. He didn't save the game. He lost his progress. We can see that some <coughs> of the players were using accelerated couches. So basically cheating, yeah? Yeah. Uh, so what to do next? Let's get this pumpkin. <laughs> But something is, is, is not right, yeah? Mm, Some yes. people might die in the background. Uh, something might be a little bit shady, yes. I would say. Right here we have uh, a suit, uh, orange suit. Yes. And when we... Examine it. Yeah, wh when, we, when we wear the suit, yes. something weird is going to happen. Yes. What's going on? Well. Uh, uh, it shows, uh, w w when we can see those, uh, those animations, uh, we can deduct that there is something wrong with the time in this game now. And if we are in a free-to-play game where time is a very important factor, then accelerating the time uh, is um, causing us, that uh, is causing, um, uh, well... It's not fair. It's not fair, it's not yeah. fair. We, we, we may find something uh, earlier and this game is a loot box game so um, if time accelerates then we may find that loot, loot box um, sooner it's yeah. cheating yes and the NPCs <coughs> are telling us that the best players wear the orange suits yeah so when we have the orange uniform yeah. we just harvest faster yeah I think it's a little bit spoiling now so <laughs> <laughs> Not really, it's all in the demo. So. Okay, <laughs> it, it could change, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it all can change. It's still a work in progress, right. so the things you, you, you can see now, apart from the UI, the UI will be uh, reworked yes. for, for sure. Uh, but the branching, the dialogues, it will all... Uh, it's still a work in progress, yeah. And the, the most important thing in game deck cases is that what appears to be true uh, usually is not the whole truth behind the first truth, we find another one, another one, the curtains of probability, as I call them. So uh, when you see that a player is cheating, it's kind of obvious, and then we must find out uh, why and who is behind him and what is the bigger scheme. I like those cows. Yeah, cows are, are great. <laughs> Our video uh, editor uh, likes the cow a lot. Really? Yeah, he, he likes to play with, with the cows, you know, move it a little bit left and right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So... Uh, I like the horse. Yes, I like it. I like it too. We have four clues. Yeah. So we can, we can uh, deduct what, what to do next. We, we can uh, predict what, what is going on, yeah. We have three options. You know, someone else is pulling the strings. We have a bug or a feature or uh, they are junkies. Yes. So let's, let's see what the player chose this time. Uh, he's thinking. You, he's you, thinking. You, can, you can pick a bad, uh, a bad option, yeah? You can, you can yes. pick something that is really stupid, yeah? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, the game doesn't judge you. If you chose that they are junkies, well, it is. It becomes your truth, yeah. And you go by by this line. Uh, you are the sum of your choices. Yes. Right? You, you can play the game uh, very strangely, yes. yeah, yes. very odd, but uh, it's still your choices. Of course, and then uh, you will meet the consequences, and something interesting may, might come out of this, of course. And uh, here we have a phone call. Uh, Let's, let's call it phone call yeah. from Kit. Uh, it's a sense, really. He's sensing us. Okay. <laughs> uh, so he's telling us that it's not exactly what we think uh, is happening here. Yes. Uh, it's, it's a normal thing in Game Deckverse. Yeah. And this is a short glimpse of the gameplay. Uh, right. This is the, d the demo we had on Gamescom and mm -hmm. PAX. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, what do you think, guys? <laughs> Did you like it? Yeah. I, I did. Uh, many people uh, <laughs> thought that Game Deck is a farm game. Uh, <laughs> really? And we, we, have to, uh, we have to say that uh, harvest time 
is just one of the virtual worlds. Yes. When you live in a cyberpunk city, for example, the tw 22nd century, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, you, you cannot see the sun, uh, there's no animals uh, present in... No. Yeah, so many of them just want to, to go back in time, so to see the cows, the yes. horses, yeah? Of course, well, uh, it is important to understand that uh, in game diverse, um, people live in cities' cages. They are really big, they are really huge, gargantuan, very tall cities that are separated from nature by ABB barriers, that is anti-bios barriers. Why is that so? It is so because the nature turned against humanity. Uh, animals and plants are aggressive are, and, and the climate is aggressive. So people live uh, outside of nature. Nature is aggressive. So a game where you can plant uh, pumpkins, yes? Uh, when you can see uh, the nature. When and you pet can cows. And pet cows. Is, uh, could be very, very uh, uh, attractive. When you can touch the soil, uh, uh, when you can do the farm things. Of course, when you live um, higher in, in the polis, uh, then you can see the sun and the sky, of course. But, but still, you do not have um, a deep uh, um, contact with the nature. So such games uh, could become very attractive for many, many people. Many people can't afford going up in, this, in the city, yeah? Uh, no, it's easy. It's rather easy, but uh, well, you, if you don't live there, you can go up, see the sky, uh, talk to somebody, and then you must go down. And uh, well, because you live there, mm -hmm. there is your apartment, there is your job, and so on. So um, yes, it, 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 the, the most important thing I think in harvest time is that uh, there you have the contact with nature, and nature is. Uh, I think you do, don't have uh, to have contact with in Game Deckverse. If you are an outranger, then you are uh, trained in uh, going behind uh, the ABB barriers. But if you are not an outranger, you don't want to go there because most probably you would die there. Okay, so let's go next uh, to the Q&A session. Yes. Uh, we gathered many questions from the social media, yep. uh, from the forums. Uh, your, your, your game, our game, is very yes. popular on, on forums, on yes. the RPG forums. Mm -hmm. uh, and many, many, many great questions right. uh, have been sent to us. I, I so think let's, too let's many. start <laughs> with the questions about the lore, yep. about, about game deck verse, because yes. people just want to know more about this world. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the first question, will the plot of the game be based on a specific book from the world of game deck? Well, yes and no. Um, why yes? Uh, it's set uh, at the end of the second tome. So many interesting things happen uh, uh, in Game Deckverse in that period of time. So um, there is one terraformed planet already. So some people are um, emigrating there. But we will not go to, to another planet in our game. Uh, but uh, there is a social unrest because some people can afford that and some just can't go there. Uh, Earth is polluted. Uh, it's a place, uh, as I said, with nature that turned against humanity. Another planet is clean, is, is a paradise. But I cannot afford to go there. Uh, second thing, um, there are bell bags already. So what is a bell bag? It's, it's a brainless body. So if I am old, uh, for example, if I am 80 and I can afford it, I buy my body that has my DNA that is 18, and but it doesn't have brain. That this is why it is called brainless or bellback. And then I have my brain transplanted into this body, and I'm young again. So, and I can afford it, but many people cannot afford it and will die. So some people will be immortal, and some people will not be immortal. So. Uh, uh, there are many interesting things going on uh, in Game Diverse in that period of time, so, and uh, we want to show those contrasts in our game. But on the other hand, um, we do not repeat the stories uh, from the books, so the story that we create in this game is entirely new, 
so you don't have to know the books uh, and uh, the readers that know the books uh, don't have to worry they will uh, have the chance to participate in an entirely different new story created especially for the game okay let's let's get a one question from the chat uh, mm -hmm. have you ever expected that someone make a, ba a game based on your book well not expected i uh, I dreamt about it because I loved games uh, all, all my life. I play games uh, since they were created, since ZX Spectrum. And uh, since I loved games so much, I wrote books about game deck. So I wanted uh, my books to become a game, but uh, well, I didn't expect that. I just wanted it. <coughs> Will the game adapt the technology to what has changed around us since the books were published? Well, that's an interesting question and a good one because um, usually literature, that is science fiction, uh, gets outdated sooner or later. For example, when Stanislav Lem wrote a book uh, um, uh, that uh, the humanity will collapse because the paper will um, uh, break down, uh, then we know now that it wouldn't be the case because paper is not that important in storing the uh, information. So um, it's a good question, but um, I don't know why my books didn't get outdated. So uh, there was no need to change anything for the game. Um, in my times when I started to write game deck, there was a poor Wi-Fi, for example. There were cables everywhere but I predicted that it won't be so in the future. Uh, there, were many pro there, there wasn't any Google Glass project uh, those times, but I predicted that glasses would be very important in the future, glasses and lenses and so on. So um, I was lucky and I predicted many things and we don't have to change practically anything uh, uh, in creation of this game. So to what extent are you involved in the game plot creation? Uh, well, what do you do? Uh, what, what, I do? what do we pay you for? <laughs> I, do, I do really many things uh, uh, in this project. For example, I cooperate with you. Yes. So I cooperate with marketing guys and I do what they ask me to do. Yeah, so Martin, you will have to be here yes. 6 p.m. after work. And I am. Yeah. And I am here. Yeah, yes, you yes, are. Yes, 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 you are. You, you tell me, Martin, write something uh, about Low City. And I do that. You tell me, uh, Martin, we want you to uh, talk uh, be, be in fr at the front of the camera uh, about Low City. I do that. So uh, I, uh, you want me to write something about Game Dex gear. I do that. I yeah, do everything. Martin likes to write stuff. And I, I say, <laughs> keep it short. <laughs> and I get this. <laughs> well. Not always it is possible to make something short. I know that the contemporary world likes short things, but if you want to uh, explain something really deep, it cannot be short. So it's the first thing that I do. The, th the, the second thing that I do is, uh, is that I am the member of designer's team. A member, not a chief, but just a simple member, just a cog uh, in the big machine. Uh, and uh, I cooperate with designers. Uh, I help them to uh, design a big meta plot that connects all the cases. Uh, I help them uh, to develop stories of um, single cases. Uh, sometimes they ask me to help them to solve a, a simple story situation. So I write several propositions for them and they choose something. Sometimes I uh, write uh, little uh, game books for them and they choose some, something from, 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 from there. Um, so uh, more or less this is my designer's uh, work. Uh, apart from that I will write all the interactions. So designers design them and tell me, well, here is a quarrel, here is a love scene, here is something else, and I write everything down. So uh, all the interactions that uh, the players will read are uh, written by me. Interactions with objects, interactions with NPCs, interactions with, with uh, everything will be written by me. So I'm a writer, you could say that. Um, apart from that, I am a consultant, so I keep the lore. I'm a, the, the, lore, the lore master. The lore so, lord. Yes. So um, when a 
an avatar of a character needs to be created. Then I'm asked by a capo di tutti capi, which is Marcin Rybinski, he's the lead designer. He says, Marcin, uh, describe a character. So I do that, then it goes to Marcin, then he says, okay, or change something, then I change something, then it goes to artists, then they paint something, then it goes back to me, it goes back to Marcin, and uh, when we agree, uh, the character is done. I'm uh, supposed to describe the locations, the characters, uh, the sets, uh, well, practically everything. So I cooperate with uh, artists, graphic artists, uh, with designers, and I cooperate with our co composer, Agnieszka Ruminska. I like her very much, she's, she's a fantastic composer, and every time she's supposed to write another song, another, another track, uh, she writes to me, she says, Marcin, uh, I have to do this in this location, so could you help me, could you uh, um, send me some referential tracks? Then I am looking uh, in internet for something that I think would be right, I, send it to her, she sends me something back and we discuss, we discuss and then eventually we find that we agree uh, to the mood. Of course it's all the time with the cooperation with designers and with uh, Marcin Rybinski, but uh, well, we like to cooperate with, with each other, uh, with, with Agnieszka. So I think that this is more or less all. Uh, so you, you, do, you do everything? I poke my nose uh, uh, everywhere, of course. Um, it, sometimes it is funny, sometimes uh, it may be a little bit annoying to somebody, but, but at the end of the day, uh, I try to keep the, the healthy balance. Yeah, we're all on, this, on the same ship. Yeah. Yeah? We, yeah. we just want this game to, to be yeah. as good as, as possible. As good as it can be, of course. Uh, we have a, another question from the chat. Why do you think many Polish de developers are making cyberpunk games? Because it's, uh, I can just speak for myself, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a very good genre. Uh, we have many fantasy games, we have mm -hmm. many fantasy RPGs, mm -hmm. uh, we have many action shooters, etc. Uh, I think that f um, the last 10 to, to 20 mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. we, we lacked cyberpunk games. Yeah. So people who just liked this genre mm -hmm. uh, are just grown enough, mm -hmm. old enough to make own games and they just chose the, the cyberpunk genre. Yes, I, I think it's a um, thing of a trend. Everything changes. There was a big um, hype on fantasy for a long time, for post-apo uh, for a long time. Now it's the time for cyberpunk. I don't know why now. Well, my first story about Game Deck was written in 2002. So it was 17 years ago. Um, so I liked this genre quite a long time ago. Uh, why now games are being developed in, in this genre? Well, as we said, it, has, it, it had to be so. Do you think that the vision of Game Deck will become the reality one day? Um, yeah. Yes and no. <laughs> Well, it's so, never simple. With <laughs> yes, you, it's, yeah? it's never simple. It's never simple. Well, uh, why yes? Uh, because um, I try to predict uh, what people want, and it's not very difficult to predict that because uh, we can see that uh, today. So if I uh, think about what people want, uh, those who have power, those who are powerless, uh, corporations, governments, and so on then I find um, the ways for them to achieve that. And many readers who read my books say to me, Martin, it's so real, it could be so, it really could be so, and it's frightening. So from this point of view, it can be. But from another point of view, two major things would have to happen uh, for Game Diverse vision to become true. The first thing is uh, the real rage of nature. So, uh, so, so that humans would really separate themselves from nature uh, by those ABB barriers. So uh, now we can sometimes hear that some animals are becoming uh, very violent. For example, on the coast of Great Britain, there were seagulls who attacked dogs and killed them and they were attacking humans as well. But uh, 
Well, it's a it's one case, you know. Uh, so um, I don't see now uh, it would be possible for nature to rage that much uh, that uh, there would be uh, uh, so many mut mutations of animals and plants. So this is the first factor. The second factor is an anti-G technology, anti-gravitational technology. Uh, it is the basis of, of game big verse. Why the towers of police of, of those great cities are so high? Because they are support, supported by anti-G rings. Why is the uh, net of pavement so dense? Because they are supported by anti-G uh, um, generators. Uh, there are no cars in Game Degverse, there are new mobiles, so uh, there are flying cars that are also, also supported by anti-G technology. So uh, now uh, we know that the uh, gravitational waves that are detected, they have been detected, it's a great breakthrough, so we, if we have detected a wave, then um, we are very close to detect graviton. Yes, but it is not detected and it's a very long way from detecting a particle and harnessing it. So if, uh, if, um, the, uh, if we would face the nature rage and if we would harness uh, gravity, then game deck verse would become reality. So why did you pick Warsaw City? Why not Berlin? <laughs> why not Tokyo? Why not London? Well, I'm Polish. I live in Warsaw or near Warsaw for 30 years now. So, um, what city would I choose? Yes, I know that uh, every UFOs land in United States or uh, they yes. hang above New York until District 9 by uh, Neil Blomkamp yes. when the gigantic UFO hang uh, above Johannesburg. Yes. Uh, I know that all the great monsters with uh, Godzilla, Gojira uh, uh, are fighting in uh, Japan until Cl Cloverfield, a very interesting movie where great monsters were in New York. But New York, Japan, New York, Japan, Johannesburg, okay, well, Berlin was in a very good movie, uh, Mute. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very good movie on Netflix. But um, I like Warsaw. And I think that it is something new, something fresh in the idea that uh, in my books and uh, in our game, it will, it will not be New York at last. It will not be Los Angeles. It will be Warsaw City, the great city in Central Europe, very interesting with a lot of uh, sun and shade as well. Okay, uh, is there anything you're adding to the game you couldn't add easily to the book? Well, that is a strange question because uh, writing is the cheapest way of um, creating a vision. There is only a writer, a screen and, and uh, the keyboard and you don't need anything else. So if you want to create something really big, so really something really intricate, something really uh, enormous, then you just have to write several, several sentences and it is. And the reader can read that and imagines uh, fantastic things. If you want to transfer it to a game or to a movie, then it's expensive. The producer uh, t tells you, well, Martin, it's too expensive. It, it cannot be so. You wrote it, it was easy. Writing is easy, writing is cheap. And if you want to create something in a game, well, we face some problems. But, but on the other hand, um, we have created something. Um, well, many things, because um, on the other hand, when you write something and imagine things, you think you have imagined a lot, but, but when you meet artists, graphic artists, it occurs that you didn't think of so many details. And you have to answer so many questions, how it is built, how does it work, uh, how does it hover over the ground and so on. So, uh, artists added a lot, a lot of details and I'm very grateful uh, for them. And on the other hand, sometimes designers ask very strange questions. For example, what, uh, how do funerals look like in Game Deckverse? I never wrote about it. So I had to think about it and to imagine it and to write it down. How do the roofs in a given game look like in Game Deckverse? Well, I didn't think about it. So again, I had to um, imagine it. But you have a uh, big material data to, to use in your textbooks. 
Uh, yes, but, well, well, I, I had to write a, a lot of text for designers and I never knew whether uh, they would use it or, or, or not. So eventually uh, some of them, one of them, I don't remember exactly, maybe it was uh, Piotr Poskart, um, asked me an inter interesting question and then I said, well, we have to invent something, especially for the game. And it was a V-Ghost. I never, well, I wrote about something like that in the fourth and in the fifth tome of Book Saga, but we based on the first three tomes. So what is Vigos? If we scan your psyche now, mm -hmm. and we have a Vigos machine, then we could create an AI that would emulate you that would behave a little bit like you and if the scan would be really good this AI could emulate you very well. Uh, it could be in a computer, it could be a holo uh, hologram uh, or it could have a mobrium or a, um, well, a mobrium, uh, you don't know what mobrium is, it, it's a um, robot-like body, yes? And we could put this um, AI program into this robot-like body, into this mobrium, and it would emulate you. So, uh, if, um, well, it's, it's a first example. The second example is if somebody dies, uh, and everybody cries, well, he died or she died, and so on, somebody could, can say, well, let's create a uh, V-Ghost of that person, uh, like in a black mirror. So, um, basing on the text a given person uh, was writing, basing on emails, basing on all the recordings, uh, we create an AI that emulates that uh, missing person. So, it's a sad story, but it, well, it, 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 it's something. Right? There is no room for mourning, yeah? You, you, yes. you cannot, you, you have this person next to you yes. all the time. Yes, so um, uh, we created that. I don't uh, uh, describe it in the first three parts of my books, but for the use of the game, uh, it was something um, uh, good, and we, we did that. We did that. Okay, so we have Harvest Time, which is yeah. based on a free to play game. Yeah. If you could choose one game or one I don't know, genre, Yeah, you could, you could pick. Which one w would you like to add to Game Deck as a new virtual world? Yes, all my colleagues in, in Anshar know the, uh, the answer to that. I love space simulators. So uh, it would definitely be a space sim. And uh, in one of uh, the stories about Game Deck, I just described this um, virtual world. Uh, well, in my books, it's called, uh, uh, virtual worlds are called sensory worlds. And its name is Dream Space. Uh, it's an open world, it's a sandbox in space and you can be a space pirate, a space trader, whoever you want to be, you have your own space spaceship and you just travel through the space. So basically a Star Citizen. Yes, Star Citizen, I love that game. Uh, okay, <coughs> so will anything from the game later be reflected in the book lore or the universe? So any idea which came up during the development of game game deck mm -hmm. will be added to your books? Well, for now it is impossible because uh, the books that I have written are written. So uh, I cannot now change them basing on uh, the things that we have created in the game. I would like to, but I'm not George Lucas who uh, tinkers with his uh, creations all the time, so uh, I will not do that. But if I would, um, write a book that is between the first and the second tome and the uh, three years of the game book verse time between them then uh, certainly i would add many things that uh, we have created in the game and uh, maybe even some characters it would be fun so this is one of the the questions which uh, you thought was very interesting yeah so basically <coughs> we play in the virtual worlds uh, not not the low city, not the realium, yeah, mm -hmm. the virtual sensory world. Mm -hmm. So, if this uh, is a game, mm -hmm. shouldn't it have some locks or I don't know uh, CCTVs or something like this? So when someone commits a crime, they won't have to to call the game deck, but just mm -hmm. view the locks or or just rewind the tapes. Yeah, uh, tapes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Of course, it is the case. Yes, they do. Uh, at the beginning, when there are problems in the game that are, n well, 
Well, let's get for, from the beginning. If you are a gamer, if you are a player, and you have a problem in solving a puzzle in the game, then you don't call the admins and you don't check the code because you are just a, a, a player. You call Game Deck. You say, help me, I will, pay you. Uh, I will pay you, help me in solving that puzzle. Or if you are a clan leader in a game mm -hmm. and you want to win a big battle with another clan, but you need someone who is a really good player who would help you, you call Game Deck or even some Game Decks but you don't call admins because it's not their problems that the problem that you cannot win a battle in a okay. um, MMO game. Uh, if you fall in love with a person in a game in, in a Paradise Beach, there is a, such a game, and you want to know uh, whether it is a man pretending to be a woman, or if it's a real woman in the real world, or if it's an NPC an AI, a bot, you want to know. You don't call admins. Well, check for me this uh, Anne Sokolovsky, I want to know who she is. You would be embarrassed. You call Game Deck. And why do you, why do, you do that? Because Game Decks are people of confidence. They are discreet. Uh, in Game Deckverse, um, you um, can procure any evidence you want. You can uh, make a movie, make a film, when you say things that you never, never said. So um, credibility is an important thing in game decks, and game decks do have that credibility. So uh, when you call a game deck, it is like you would call a priest. Uh, your, your, well, <laughs> your, your mystery <laughs> stays with him or her. Uh, so that's the first thing. Uh, the, well, so if you are a player and you have a problem, you don't call admins. That's the, uh, the first uh, part yeah, but, of the answer. But uh, despite the world you're, you live in, yeah. the world can change. Yeah. Yeah, you can be in the real world yeah. or the sensory world. Yes. But uh, the people won't change. They will still, still try to steal from you, uh, yes. to lie. Yes. Yes, of course. So, well, that, that's the second second part. Um, in game diverse games are incredibly complex, and their code is very complex. It's like Matrix in the Matrix movie. So, um, it is impossible for a simple programmer to f uh, very often to find a problem in the code. Uh, so, uh, programmers have uh, their AIs who search for bugs and, uh, and, some, uh, and uh, things like that, but a human being is not able to <coughs> sometimes to solve a problem. So <coughs> I don't know if, if you know, if you know that if you want to hack something, if you want to crack something, the weakest part of, uh, the, of the system is the human. So uh, it's not like you see in the movies that a hacker just writes down something very fast uh, and uh, introduces a Trojan horse or something else and then cracks miraculously um, a program. He talks to men, to women, to people who could know uh, the password. And when he gets to know them, he can find the places where those passwords are uh, stored and something like that. So humans are always the weakest part of the system. So in Game Deckverse, when admins fail, when programmers fail, when vRunners fail, vRunners are persons who, uh, uh, who cooperate with the police, then you call Game Deck. And Game Deck is not a good programmer, but uh, he or she is good with humans. He knows psychology, he knows body language, he knows how to talk, he knows how to deduct, he knows how to think. The biggest weapon of a game deck is his mind, is his ability to think, and of course he knows a little bit of programming. He always has a friend who, who knows uh, very good, who, who is a good programmer, but it's like in, in uh, the crime stories. Uh, well, lab guys, the guys that work in the laboratory, don't solve the cases. They give some evidence, they give some info to <coughs> investigators. They do the cases. So it's like in the crime stories, game decks are just good in solving <coughs> problems. In the world that is so complex that programmers 
cannot find problems in the, in the programs because the programs are so complex as in the Matrix movie. Okay, so basically if you want to hack or you want to, to, to create a diversion, mm -hmm. you can do it in the virtual world as well as, as in the real room. Yes. So yes. logs and CCTVs or something taped uh, mm -hmm. during the game, mm -hmm. pre-recorded, mm -hmm. can be ma manipulated, yeah? It can be. Okay. You've, you've got to talk to, the, to, to a human. You've got to find who did it, who is involved, yes? And by talking, by interacting, by, th uh, by um, analyzing what he or she says, you will, qu you will be much quicker in solving the problem than in uh, just looking at the code which is so long, so big, so enormous that we cannot even imagine it. Imagine. Well, uh, you, uh, you have to know that... You have so the, the cold hands! Cold, yes. Uh, but God in damn. this... In this well, <laughs> He's I, freezing! I, I, really? I, I, don't, I, don't I have know. so warm hands and he's so cold. I don't know if I'm al alive. So, uh, Jeez! So, uh, w when you are a player, and uh, you have a helmet on your head, then this helmet um, stimulates your brain in billions of places. So we have 100 billions of neurons in, in our brains, 100 billions. Every neuron uh, has more or less 10,000 synapses. So uh, the helmets are extremely, extremely uh, complex devices and the programs of the games control all of it. Now imagine thousands of gamers on a server in a game that stimulates their brains in so many places and now imagine the code mm -hmm. and find me a bug <laughs> that is in the cloud. Shit, you've got to call the game deck, a good one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we have a good question from uh, our chat, mm -hmm. from the live stream. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any influences from other detective characters in literature? Because you, you were saying about the brain, you have, you yeah. have to think. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically the first thing that came uh, to my mind is Sherlock Holmes. It could be, but I didn't uh, read uh, Sherlock Holmes stories. I didn't uh, read Chandler stories. I didn't read any detective stories uh, or novels. When I was writing Game Deck, I just created for him and his stories from the scratch. Uh, it was an entirely new thing. Well, I knew some uh, some some movies uh, basing on um, that were based on Chandler's um, Raymond Chandler's uh, novels, but I didn't, didn't read them. So I just had a very vague um, imagine um, vision of uh, what a Game Deck could be. It was a very fresh creation, I think. Uh, so the next question is about the differences between the world of Game Deck and other cyberpunk worlds like Shadowrun or mm -hmm. Cyberpunk. But to keep it short, you, we, we were talking about this before. Yeah. You didn't yeah. experience the cyberpunk or, or the Shadowrun. No. So uh, there's no chance that the Game Deck is based on these systems. No, no, it is not because I didn't read Mike Pondsmith uh, um, books, uh, nor uh, I didn't know the Shadowrun world. So what I can tell you that, well, in Game Deck, as I said, people live in very big cities. They live uh, like birds on branches where trunks of those trees are those towers and branches are those pavements and uh, then flying nests are walking platforms, as I call them. Um, there is an enormous technological development, it's very fast, so you are usually um, not up to date in many fields. It, what you buy today will, will become obsolete, uh, obsolete in, in a month. Uh, the ads are everywhere, you, you cannot escape the, the holograms. Uh, yes, holograms, yes, the ads, yes. Uh, they are everywhere, you cannot ex ex escape them because uh, money rules this world. Society changes very fast. So uh, there are marriages and there are herds, uh, some men, some women together, creating a family. Um, there are techno religions uh, there. So, uh, so what is a techno religion? Uh, you put on a jipo, that is a helmet that stimulates your god area. There is such an area in, in your brain. And then you have the um, sensation of uh, being in contact with uh, with someone who feels like God. Well, if you are interested, uh, just check uh, Michael Pensinger, 
um, experiments, they are real and they, uh, well, he discovered God area in, uh, in our brains. Um, well, as I said, uh, a new planet is terraform, a Gaia in Sigma, Sigma Draconis system. Uh, well, the Belbecks, uh, I said uh, that before. Um, generally speaking, Game Deck Verse is not a dystopia. Well, uh, there is a trend of uh, dystopias now. Uh, mm, I don't like dystopias very much. It's more like allotopy or utopy. Well, of course, there are some dark parts of Game Deck Verse, but uh, mm, not only dark sides. Uh, there are many people who are quite happy in Game Deck Verse. There's some sun in this uh, reality, there is some sky, there is some hope in this reality. So if someone is happy with his life in the reality, mm -hmm. uh, why would he go into, into those sensory worlds? Well, I think you are quite a happy person. Why do you play? Uh, people always will want to fulfill their dreams. And since our bodies and our reality, even the reality in, uh, in the future, will not allow us to fulfill our dreams, then we will enter the games to be what we want to be. Now, in this reality and in the realium of uh, the, the end of the 22nd century, there will always be little nasty things that will bite you, that will annoy you, that will make your life harsh. And if you enter the game, you can be a hero, you can fight dragons, you can be a dragon. You don't have to get drunk to be a dragon. In reality, you have to get drunk to be a dragon. And then you will behave like that. But in the game, you can be whoever you want to be, and you can look like, uh, like, like uh, what you want to look like. So you, if you are short in the game, you can be tall. If you are ugly in the game, you can be beautiful. If you are a man and you want to be a woman in the game, you can do that. Just uh, do it like, uh, just like that. So, so. Uh, people enter the games to fulfill their dreams and sometimes they fall in love in a given reality and they say, well, I don't like the realium of the, the end of the 22nd century, I want to live in this fantasy world. And they live there, uh, well, uh, for four days they go out to realium, they eat something and then again uh, they re-enter the, uh, the ver uh, sensory worlds. Okay, so uh, do we have some guidelines uh, in which help you create another character for the game because y you basically have to have some uh, stereotypes or, or some schematics for a person but uh, we, we can see um, a lot of characters in game deck which mm -hmm. have uh, a rich background mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but what about the regular NPCs or, or the, the lowest of the lowest yes. from, from the game? Uh, I think it's a good question for, for game designers, not for a writer, but... Um, but you have to write this stuff. Yes, yes I do, so I do try like to... It? Do, you, do you like to write the, the, the lowest NPC stuff? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. But, well, when you like writing, you like writing. And uh, every time I, I do that, uh, there is some well, some a sort of happiness in, inside of me, so uh, I like it. So, mm, uh, I, I always try no, not to create stereotypes and uh, easy archetypes of characters because, uh, well, it's easy, it's cheap. Um, so, what can we find in Game Deck Verse? Well, there are some examples here. Well, as I said, there are outrangers, so people who know how to behave outside of ABB barriers. There will be no places in, um, in, in the game outside of ABB barriers, but we will meet some outrangers um, in, I think, very interesting situations. And we will be able to see how they think, how they, how they treat people who never were behind ABB barriers. There are some gang members. I know that cyberpunk is um, uh, usually um, uh, connected with gangs, so there are the gangs in low city, but they are not necessarily um, the bad guys. They are just the guys who know how to get to the under city and plunder it. Uh, in search for some artifacts from before the information, uh, informational era. There are some ex-soldiers, ex-mercenaries who fought in uh, private armies, in private wars. Uh, there are some, just some low city punks who wants to go higher 
the high city managers who have problems with their wives, with their sons, and with some uh, not very easy decisions they have to make. Uh, and sometimes they deal with not so very legal things or moral things. Uh, well, we can meet some old men who want to play some dangerous games and uh, they know that they will not be able to earn money for a bailback, so they um, risk their lives playing dangerous games, uh, they risk the stroke, they risk a heart attack, they sometimes will want to even enter illegal games that can make you die uh, because they want to end their lives in a glamorous um, uh, epic way uh, so uh, long story short game deck verse is not a black and white um, universe um, and uh, every, we, we try that uh, we try to create um, characters that uh, have their reasons, that have their stories, that are not very schematic. Okay, so you have a lot of writing to do. Yeah. <coughs> but you like it, so. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about non-human races in cyberpunk? Well, I didn't know that in cyberpunk there are non-human races. <coughs> But now I, that I have read that question, uh, I already know. Well, creating an alien race is a very, very um, difficult stuff. Uh, I have created two or three alien races in my books, in the fourth and in the fifth um, um, part of a, a Game Deck Saga. Um, but they will not be in the game because uh, it's the fourth and the fifth part. So um, in, the, uh, in our game there will be not alien species, but there will be some strange people there, like people who have artificial brains, or people who were created in the net uh, from the scratch. They are called diginets. Uh, so there will be many um, shades of, of, uh, of the question, uh, who is human? Yes, uh, so if uh, we think that a person who was created in the net is alien, then yes, there will be aliens. That's a good enough answer for, mm -hmm. for me. I, mm -hmm. I think our uh, listeners, readers, or whoever will watch this or watching it right now mm -hmm. uh, will be satisfied okay. with, this, okay. with this answer. We can go, go to the next question. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> there's a question about what technologies did you manage to predict, but you already said that you, you were thinking about the Google Glass yes. even before it was yes. announced. Yes, I think so. And uh, of course lenses, of course some types of gloves that detect our, uh, well, that create our sense of touch. Uh, um, even clothes uh, that uh, take care of our temperature. Um, well. These are technologies. I, I think I have, well, many readers write to me, how did you predict that? I thought it was obvious. So uh, I don't remember uh, that now, but I have predicted some very strange stuff, not technological, like, for example, tornadoes in Poland. When I was writing about tornadoes in Poland, I, I, I said to myself, Marcin, you, you are exaggerating. It cannot happen. It, it did. Uh, so mm, many strange uh, things uh, happened since, since I wrote books and it occurred that I, predict, uh, I have predicted them. I don't know how. Okay, so if, if you were about to translate your books, mm -hmm. what languages would you choose? Uh, yes, uh, that's a strange qu qu question. Uh, all the languages, of course. Uh, beginning with uh, Chinese, uh, uh, Japanese, Spanish, German, French, uh, well, all the languages, because I want uh, everybody to, to be able to read my books. Yeah, when I, when I uh, read this, this question, uh, mm -hmm. I thought exactly the same. Yeah. Every author wants to translate the, the book yeah. into every language in the yes. world, so everyone can, yeah. can read. read yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we have some private questions. Uh, not so so private, no, not, but uh, yeah. we, we can we, we have some time to to answer a couple of them. Yeah. So, what's the most challenging part <coughs> of moving from a book to a video game? Well, there are two challenges. The first is the fact that you have to co cooperate and compromise. So, an artist has his vision or, or her vision. You don't have to be a dictator. Uh, you have to accept those ideas. 
Um, that the, that's the first thing. Uh, designers have their own ideas and uh, it has to be their story as well, the, their game as well. It, uh, I don't have to, uh, I, I cannot act like uh, a person who says it's a, it's, this is my world so it has to be my way. No, it, it wouldn't be so. Mm -hmm. it, it would be a disaster. So I have to say, yes, of course, it's a fine idea. And the second thing is the constant changes of meta plot because uh, Every time uh, there can be a situation when a producer will come and he will say add this or remove that. So we have to be prepared uh, for uh, little or bigger changes and when you write you are your own uh, manager. So you can change something but it was your decision. Here sometimes we have to change something because it's just game dev. It, it is a constant change so it, it is a challenge. Uh, we will have questions from the chat mm -hmm. as well. So uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, ask it, uh, ask them now. Mm -hmm. We will pick one or two mm -hmm. from the from the live stream chat. Mm -hmm. So think about it. Think about the best questions you, you can ever uh, <laughs> ask our author. Right. Uh, okay. So what cyberpunk game do you uh, look forward to most? Wh which one would you like to play the most? Game that game. Yeah, yeah. I knew it. Yeah, we sing. Yeah. <laughs> Game day. Uh, I was thinking about this question, and besides uh, Game Deck, uh -huh. uh, there are so many cyber cyberpunk games announced this time, yes. uh, yeah. this year. Yeah. Uh, it's very hard to, to choose because some of them are very light, yeah. like uh, driving a cop in a cyberpunk city, yeah. uh, or uh, I don't know some RPGs, etc. As a gamer myself, mm -hmm. uh, I would like to play all of them. But I'm old right now. M many of you wouldn't wouldn't believe, but I'm old, so I don't have much time. <laughs> okay. I know you're older, but you, you have your space citizen, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, I would like to play all of them, okay. uh, even if uh, if it's not uh, for pleasure, so for. Uh, for research purposes. Yes. Yes. Uh, this is what what I what I uh, say to my wife. This is right. this is the research. Yes. I have it's to play it yeah. for for my work. Of course. Yeah. Of course. I'm sorry, honey. We, we 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 can't go to to the cinema. I have to play. I, ha I, I simply have to play I right say, now. I say to my wife that it's a therapy. I play the game. It's a therapy. You know, it makes me calm. Yeah, it depends on which game are you playing. I play games which are far away from the therapy. <laughs> yes, I, well, well, I play one game mainly, so. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I have some questions about the design. Mm -hmm. uh, so are we going to visit other planets? Uh, this is the part where, where I will talk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, okay. There's no other planets than, uh, than the Realium, the, the Warsaw City. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many virtual worlds, yeah. sensory worlds, but uh, no other planets. Mm -hmm. uh, will it be possible to see any visual references uh, to the present day Warsaw of the 21st century? You can answer this question. You live in the Warsaw, yeah? No, because, um, because all, the, um, all the Warsaw that we know now is in the Undercity the ruins of it. Mm -hmm. There is all, only a little part preserved. It is the old town in the Undercity. It's protected by very thick, very, very high walls, but there will be no gameplay there. So uh, everything that we will see in Warsaw City in the game will be new. There will be no... Re well, there will be some references in as far as some neons or uh, Easter eggs, of course, some symbols, some some uh, symbols of Warsaw. Like uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but yes, yes, but not the buildings of the old Warsaw. Okay. Um, there's also a question about uh, the main plot. Mm -hmm. So if the cases are connected, mm -hmm. uh, I think that every game uh, is prepared. So every little quest, every little. Uh, travel you do or, or the, the talk you, you, you make with someone uh, is uh, designed to be a part of something bigger. Yes. So uh, yeah, everything counts. Every decision, every, uh, every dialogue, you have to be patient, uh, read all of them uh, and explore the, the, the world. Yes, we are working very hard on a bigger plot, yes. Uh, how much freedom do you have in solving crimes? 
Uh, can you blame almost anyone, a, even innocent person like in Sherlock Holmes, crimes and punishment? Good game. Mm -hmm. uh, and does it have some consequences if you blame innocent person? Well, we allow players to do a lot in game deck. You, you can pick bad decisions. You can choose uh, to blame someone who is really innocent. Uh, and the game doesn't stop. It, it, you just have to live with a decision. Uh, personally, I like to play games like this uh, just once. N never correct them. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's tempting to uh, to try another way, another mm -hmm. branch. But I think that it, it, this is my story, mm -hmm. and I, I pick this decision, mm -hmm. so I will stick with it, mm -hmm. even if it's bad. Even if I know at the, at the moment when I, when I choose this answer, uh, not mm -hmm. not this one. That it might be, uh, it might have consequences. So it's just a role play. You play the guy that is lazy or that is uh, cynical, and uh, he, uh, well, the main hero will sooner or later find out uh, the consequences of his decision. He he, he will find out uh, in the news, in TV. Um, uh, he will get to know what happened uh, because of his actions. Yes. You, you will create an interesting story as well. Uh, we want players to take another route, uh, mm -hmm. so this is why we show them the deduction screen. Mm -hmm. So you, you can see what, uh, what parts are you missing and where could you go. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not uh, visible when, when, you, when you choose the, the decision, mm -hmm. so if you, if you have to pick one of, of two or three, mm -hmm. uh, you would just have the, this one part visible to you. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you want to know something more, yeah. you have to replay it. Yes, yes. Uh, are there some typical RPG uh, attributes or skills for your characters? We have aspects and we have character background. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you choose to be a person from low city, mm -hmm. you will have more, uh, you, you will feel uh, a little bit more respect from the people from Low City. Mm -hmm. They will share more information with you. You will have easier access to some places, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have an aspect of, uh, I don't know, if you're wealthy, mm -hmm. you can you can uh, access something uh, using your money. Yeah, right. you, you can bribe someone. Uh, mm -hmm. This is just an example from the top of my head, mm -hmm. uh, but. Uh, with with being rich, there's mm -hmm. something uh, interesting because you can't you, you cannot spend the money all the time yeah. because you will lose this aspect. Yeah. You you will you won't be rich anymore. Yeah. It's like real life. <laughs> Games are real. If you spend too much, you're not you're not rich anymore. Right. So people behave even so, in the game. So aspects are fluid. Uh, they are not some uh, well uh, to some extent they are not something that will stay with you. Yes, uh, they, uh, they can come, they can go, uh, you can manipulate them. Yes, but uh, this is a very big and important part of the yeah. game. Uh, you will have to choose your background yeah. uh, very carefully, yeah. because it, it will influence the whole gameplay. Mm -hmm. uh, are there some adventure-like puzzles in game deck? Uh, if I think uh, adventure puzzle like jumping around some platforms or pushing stuff or uh, I don't know uh, Tomb Raider puzzle trap things no I don't think so uh, well, but maybe it's, one place. it's still a work in progress so yes. we will see it's it's something uh, to to discuss uh, with our team mm -hmm. but uh, if, if I think puzzle adventure mm -hmm. I, I think uh, jumping and moving stuff so I don't. I don't think so. No, don't I don't so. think so. No, not like. Not like that. It, it's not. It's not Tomb Raider. Well. Well. Yeah. No. It's not. Uh, well. We certainly we don't want to um, uh, this game to be based only on the choices uh, in the in the dialogue system. No. Uh, there will be uh, other mechanics, of course. Uh, if I'm correct, there is no combat, but we can expect some tense scenes, right? Uh, yeah, the game has no combat system, but that doesn't uh, that doesn't mean it's not brutal. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that someone uh, can't die. Mm -hmm. Your decisions have consequences. Mm -hmm. uh, if you blame someone for being, uh, I don't know, involved in something and, and uh, there's a soldier and the mm -hmm. soldier kills him, mm -hmm. uh, it's partially your fault because you pointed the, the guy to, mm -hmm. to this guy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, there's no combat, but yeah, there's uh, a lot of violence in this game. 
Yes, but it's not only about violence. Yes. Yes, so, uh, yeah, you said it. Uh, yeah, you, you once said that uh, uh, in, in a dev diary, mm -hmm. you, you, you uh, answered this part. Mm -hmm. There is no combat in this game. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it was you or Marcin Rubinsky during the uh, talk show. Well, uh, uh, are you referring to, to what I have said that uh, in contemporary games, uh, weapon is too often a tool of solving problems? Yes. Yes, uh, it is. And we didn't want that to be the case in our game. So uh, it's not that when you have a problem, you just shoot somebody and the problem is solved. It's, it's shallow, it's stupid. Uh, and death means something uh, so in our game, you know, Death is a serious thing. In games, uh, too often, death is just, well, another victim, another victim, another victim, he died, she died, who cares? Well, game deck is a little bit more serious, so death is serious as well. So if somebody dies, uh, then uh, we want the player to feel it. Uh, so we have the last question from the live stream chat. Mm -hmm. uh, slightly, off, slightly off topic, but with the game based on alternate uh, reality worlds, uh, what do you think about the current state of VR? Well, it's, uh, it's developing uh, slower than I thought, because it faces so many problems. Um, well, eventually, eventually, uh, I think that VR uh, will be um, will be domin uh, dominating the, the game industry, but so far uh, there are some technical issues that, had to, that have to be addressed. Um, you cannot see too many things, you cannot see the keyboard. Well, now the, there are new devices that you can see the throttle, you can see the joystick, but still, um, well, there are some problems. But, but, so, I'm a little bit disappointed in, in the development of, of, of VR now, but um, I think that day after day, year after year, we will come to something very interesting. Yeah, I think that VR is very immersive, mm -hmm. uh, but the level of entering the, the VR market, mm -hmm. uh, for example, buying a VR headset and, mm -hmm. and, and all the hardware yeah. might, be so, might be very, uh, very high. Yeah. Yeah? yeah, so people, People don't have money to, to, to spend on, on uh, this high quality VR headsets. Yes. Uh, so uh, it's a difficult uh, to talk right now about the VR. We will see what, what the market will, will, will bring to the table. Yeah? Yes, and uh, you, you know, um, we have in quick times. We want to have quick games. And uh, if, you, if you are playing a VR game, you have to put on this uh, headset, it's heavy, uh, your eyes uh, get sweaty and so on. There are too many inconveniences. It has to be lighter, it has to, it has to be quicker. But it's still a young t t technology, yeah. yeah? So let's give it a, a, another 10 yeah. to 15 years and let's go back to this question. <laughs> uh, so. We have finished our really? Q&A. Yeah. Really? What time is it? Uh, it's uh, 20 past seven. Okay, it's a good time. Uh, it was, it, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, it's not the last live stream you, we are doing here uh, at the Ansha Studios. This, is, this was the first one, yeah. uh, to be honest, from the Ansha Studios. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope you liked it. Uh, give us uh, uh, feedback about this, this, this type of mm -hmm. materials, of, uh, of uh, footage. Uh, I think we will render this video and upload it uh, somewhere so people who didn't have the chance to, to watch it live will have the chance to uh, watch it again. To watch it again, yeah, yeah or for the first time. Uh, but yeah, I had a good time. I, I, I think you had a good time. Yes, of course. So uh, thank you very much for being mm -hmm. here with us. Uh, as I said, it's not the last live stream we are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, give us a call. Who would you like to, to see in uh, another episode? Uh, is it a level designer or a lead designer uh, to tell us about, about the mechanics, the, the game itself? Mm -hmm. Feedback us. Guys, yes. say it, something. Yeah, it's very important to, to have feedback. Right. So, uh, so thank you very much. Uh, 
Marcin Przybyłek Thank you. That and me. Uh, I'm Mateusz, uh, the community manager, ma- manager for Anshow Studios. That was and, me. Uh, see you guys yeah. next time. Bye. Bye.